All right, welcome back to my channel. I'm Josh. This is all for one review, and today I'm going to be talking a little bit about PlayStation Vita. Bear with me during this video. I'm a little sick, so um, I'm not going to sound too good, but just bear with me. I recently bought the PS Vita uh, about a week or two ago, and this is my initial thoughts on it. Um, I played a few games. I've done the remote play on it. Um, I initially bought it because I've always been interested in the PlayStation Vita since when it came out. I just never for whatever reason bought it. I don't know if it was because the the way they advertised it in the beginning, there was very little advertisement in the beginning. And the way they advertised it was it was gonna play console games on the go. And I was under the impression it was gonna be more like the Switch and do the games that I'm playing on PlayStation 3, PlayStation 4, handheld. Um, we all found out, you know, that's not the case. And so, um, I don't think they even advertised the remote play function in the beginning either. So I don't. I think that came on later on in this life cycle because I don't remember that being a uh, a selling point in the beginning. So um, even with that, it's not the perfect you know way to play your console games that you play at home on the go. I'll get into that a bit as well. But um, I didn't buy it initially. I didn't buy it initially, and I've always really wanted it though. Um, I just couldn't justify the price of it um, and the, the library of games. I was never a really big handheld gamer. I never played handhelds, Game Boy Color, Game Boy, Game Boy Advance, all those different handhelds that came out, Sega, uh, Gear, I think it was called. All those handhelds that came out in the past, I was never into them. I had my, my sister had one, she had Pokemon on it and stuff like that, but I was never a big fan. I only liked the games. On the console, um, I played everything from N64, Atari, Sega, everything, all the consoles. And my biggest problem with handhelds was that it wasn't the full experience as far as home console games go. It was never that. It was always its own experience, which is nothing wrong with that. But I never was drawn to that. So the first one that ever really caught my eye was the PlayStation Vita. It had the marketing of you know, take your console games on the go kind of, it, not exactly, but it had that uh, feel to it. Like you're gonna play the full fledged experiences on the go. And it wasn't necessarily that. It's almost like taking PS2 on the go um, for the most part. It's it's basically like a PS2 on the go uh, as far as their games go. I've, I've done research on them, I've seen gameplay, even though I've only had a couple handful, I mean, a couple games on the, on, on it so far. Um, I really bought the PlayStation Vita for the remote uh, play functionality. I wanted to be able to play my PS4 Pro um, anywhere that I have Wi-Fi connection. I found out um, that I can't play it at work because um, it's for whatever reason, the, the, the Switch has the same problem as well. You have to authorize, you know, accept the terms of the internet and um, I haven't figured it out yet. So if anybody knows how to do that, you can post in the comments below. I've watched a couple of videos on it and it doesn't work for, you know, typing in the, the um, address of the website that you're trying to confirm. It doesn't, it doesn't accept any of that. So neither of them do. So that kind of bums me out because I usually play at work and I can't do it with this either. I have to usually go on my phone, use my Wi-Fi tethering off my phone. It works for both of them, but it doesn't allow me to connect to the PlayStation 4 at home. I'm still working it out though. I'm gonna figure it out. But yes, I bought it for initially to play uh, um, the remote functionality of it, remote play. And even for that, I bought it on Amazon refurbished for about $120, $130. And I think it was great because I got exactly what I wanted, which was the Glacier White um, Vita to match my PS4. A little bit of backstory on that. I'm trying to do a game room at the end of the year, maybe the beginning of next year. I'm not sure yet. Um, and my theme uh, color scheme of the room is going to be uh, white and red. And so all my consoles going to be white as much as I can get them. Uh, the the room is going to be white with red accents. So that's just my my rationale behind getting white. But um, yeah, this is technically the first um, model of the remake. So there's the play, PlayStation Vita 1000 and 2000. The 1000 is basically first gen. This is second generation. It's a, like a revamp, a redo of it. So it's a slim model. 
The slim, this is the first one of the slim model as far as I know. It's from um, the first ones they released in Japan, uh, being the all white color. Because there's like different, there's a whole bunch of different variations of colors. And you can look online. You can get them from Amazon, PlayAsia, all them sites. Um, I just wanted the all white look. And so I had to look around a lot. I was looking at different other lo uh, locations and used and Craigslist and all this stuff. It was a pain a little bit because of the color I'm trying to get because they have the white with the blue in the back or uh, uh, pink in the back or green in the back, something like that. I just wanted an all white one. So they only had that one set from the first initial sets of PS Vitas in Japan. So I found that one, I uh, got it sent over to me. Uh, everything works great. It's I'm very impressed with the battery life. I'm very impressed with uh, everything it can do for when it was released. It has a lot of uh, pros to it. Um, a lot of different apps to it. Uh, everything everything works very fluidly, very quick, very nice. I'm very, very pleased and surprised with it, actually. Um, I didn't expect it to be as good as it. The only thing I will say is I don't have any experience with the first gen model, so I can't attest to that. But with the second gen, I feel like the buttons are very plasticky. The whole unit really is plasticky, and I, you know, that's a for cost, um, a cost thing, I'm sure, but um, it feels almost like like almost so light that it, it it feels weird it just, just feels a little awkward because it's so plasticky i mean even with the switch here it almost feels like a metal finish like to it, it almost i know it's plastic but it feels a little bit more like heftiness to it um that one is just it's so light it feels fragile you know in your hands but um that's not really a con that's just something i noticed and it feels it's just something to get used to for me but um but yeah, so far I've had a lot of fun with it. Um, everything's really, 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 really nice. Um, the first thing I noticed, the first thing I noticed when I when I uh, picked this thing up is that it's very tiny. The thumbsticks on it are super small. Um, it, it just gets takes to get used to, especially after the uh, the Nintendo Switch here uh, going to this, and it, it feels a little awkward. And I don't think I would have bought one of these if I didn't have the Nintendo Switch. The Nintendo Switch has made me really like my console gaming's on the go. So now that I have the PlayStation Vita, I could play my PlayStation 4 games anywhere on the go. Now, do I recommend the PlayStation Vita? I would say that if you've seen the library from it and you've had a few games that you think are really interesting that you would want to play or maybe the remote functionality, remote play interests you, um, I would go ahead and purchase it. If you can get a good deal on it like I did. If not, and you're waiting for something to come out in the future, I would pass on it because there's not much gonna be coming out for it uh, from here on out, I believe. There's only like a handful of uh, indies that are coming out every every couple months and there's no triple uh, AAA support as of now and uh, PlayStation's already announced that they're gonna do a cancel on the PlayStation 3 and the Vita as far as gold, uh, PlayStation Gold goes next year in 2019, they're gonna drop them both. So you're not gonna be able to get any free games um, from the PlayStation Gold for the PlayStation Vita or the PlayStation 3 next year. So if you're looking for anything new on the PlayStation Vita, I would say that that's not gonna happen for the most part. But if you like the library or some of the games interest you from from previous or the remote play functionality you like that I would say go ahead and pull the trigger on it if you get it on a good deal even at full price if you enjoy if you see the library and you want to really play those games then the full price is, is a great buy still um, for the PlayStation Vita and um, next video I'm going to try to do is going to be a look at what PlayStation 5 might bring um, I think they're going to do something similar to the PlayStation Vita um, because of the success of the Nintendo Switch, we'll, we'll see. But um, that's for the next video. So I'm Josh. This is all for one review. See you on the next one.